everyone. Welcome to the podcast. I'm here with my friend Rob Henderson, and we are going to talk about The Leftovers uh, Season 1. It's a show that ran on HBO from 2014 to 2017. Here's something funny, Rob. I, uh, I, um, I watched it thinking it was a contemporary show. Because I thought I just thought you wanted me to watch it, so I didn't. You know, I don't look up anything. I just found it on HBO, and I'm like, eh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And so I'm like, oh, this has some sort of themes that are, you know, it's not like woke enough for the current day, current year, but like it's almost a decade old, so that made uh, a lot more sense. Um, I, uh, yeah, you know, and, I, and I'm disappointed because I wanted it to go on. Like, it's there's going to be there's what three seasons, uh, so we're gonna. Yeah we watched a third of it um it's uh it's not a, it's not in the pantheon it's not that level for me uh but it's pretty mm. good um what's your overall impression of it yeah yeah we're different in that regard like when you tell me about a show like i look it up like i and i know you don't like to watch trailers either i like trailers like i like to get a you know a sort of sense a gestalt of like what is this like sort of who's involved who are the actors who's the director like just sort of get a you know, have a bit of prediction for where this thing's going or what it's about. Um, so, yeah, that's interesting to me that we're different there. Um, yeah, you know, I watched this show, like, episode, you know, not the whole thing, but, like, back when it was on the air, like, that, yeah, 24, I think more like 2014, 2015. I think, yeah, it's sort of skipped around. I think it, like, skipped a year in there. But I remember thinking it was interesting. I know it had kind of a, a unique premise um i knew it was on hbo they usually produce good good shows and i remember watching and thinking oh this is all right i you know i i didn't really follow it from beginning to end and then um people started asking me about it they're like hey you know, the leftovers How much did and you i watch? remember thinking like you know I, I probably watched like seven or eight episodes in total like kind of scattered across the three seasons mostly uh-huh. like seasons one and two i think um, oh, so you you, you know spoilers? Yeah. You know you're you know or do you remember? Uh, not really. I don't really remember. Like I didn't I didn't remember a lot of season one, like where it was going, or I didn't know how it was yeah. going to end either. Um, yeah. yeah, which we'll get to about like like Holy Wayne and like I, I also the other thing is like I'm like you know just older now, so like I'm picking up on different different themes, just a different kind of show. Um, yeah, and I, I noticed that. I mean, one of the things that we could talk about is whether this is a conservative show because it does have sort of religious undertone sort of christian themes in it but um but then like you know just by default anything made before like 2018 or 2020 is gonna like anything that's not woke is gonna just strike you as conservative but yeah I'd be curious to hear sort of the politics what, what you what you made of it um yeah whether it's just a product of its time or whether there's yeah. there's a sort of a point being made in terms of the yeah, the yeah well i thought it was i thought it was changed. i thought it was made during covid or like a beer or COVID or something. Um, so that would change things. But yeah, it's, I think that's um, how it got on my radar. Actually, was COVID. Yeah. Like someone immediately started talking to me about it. They're like, "Oh, this is like the leftovers," because you know, like whatever, like one percent or two percent of America died during COVID. Even though, like, I personally, I don't even know if I know anyone who actually died from it. But supposedly, one or two yeah. percent of America died. <laughs> that's what they. That's and what they. It doesn't feel like it did. Um. But in the in the leftovers, you know, what is it? Two percent of the population suddenly departs. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, let's. You know, so that was one reason why I wanted to revisit the show. Yeah, but it's it's random, right? So I don't know what the theology. We 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 don't know what the theology of this show is. The supernatural must exist. I don't think there's a non supernatural explanation because everyone just sort of disappears. Maybe there's going to come out. Oh, there's some technology. <laughs> uh, you know, the the military was experimenting or something like that. Seems unlikely. There's some god yeah. or there's some force in the universe, but it's not. It's clearly not ba- like the rapture. It's random. Some babies yeah. go. Some old people go. Some bad people. Some good people. Normal people. That's yeah. the point. Like they really emphasize that it was like uh, completely random. Um, and like you know the Garvey. Uh, so I, I like to talk. Well, let's talk about characters before uh, like politics and sort of just the cin- you know the c- cinematic qualities of it. Uh, so yeah, Garvey is like, just like, yeah, I think he's sort of like a, um, he's a very like uh, old school character and that he's not like remarkable. Okay. He's remarkably handsome and in good shape. Yeah. Right? He's got like the leading man quality. Yeah. Yeah. But other ways, not remarkable. Right. He, he mm-hmm. goes to work. You know, he's like heroic. He, he risks his life. You know, he's like, he's like good. He's just decent and good. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like, 
he doesn't have like i don't know a lot of depth like okay he loves his wife okay he loves his daughter okay um like he wants to save lives and be a cop but he, he is like a cop right he's just so he doesn't have uh like depth to him um the daughter jill is uh you know like the daughter you know it's a very sort of it's 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 a sort of just like a normie universe right mm. like some of the yeah, themes... it's a small town right it's like small town upstate new york yeah. I think it's supposed to be that way, right? Like, it's supposed to feel kind of small. Right. I don't know if I agree, though, that Kevin is... Uh, I mean, I don't... You know, I agree he doesn't have the the layers of, like, a Tony Soprano or a Walter yeah. White. Like, he's not... Um, yeah, he, it's not a pantheon kind of... It's not, like, one of the great prestige dramas. But I, I don't think he's as simple as just, like, a small-town heroic cop, right? Like, he does have... You know, it, it's the, the show kind of... You know, it's ambiguous, but it's, you know, strongly implies that he has, like, schizophrenia or some kind of mental illness, yeah. like, mental breakdown. Uh, his wife leaves him. He, like, his daughter doesn't like him. He has, like, these blackouts where he doesn't know what's going on. He, you know, so I, I think, like, the, you know, they, they, yeah. they, they do paint him as a bit more complex than just, uh, you know, a small town police chief who, you know, just wants to do the right thing. Um, yeah. I mean, at the moment of the departure, right, he's cheating on his wife uh, and he witnesses, uh, you know, his his paramour vanish in, for, in front of him. Mm -hmm. uh, so, like, that was one of the things that was interesting is like none of the none of the Garveys lost anyone. I mean, I guess Lori lost the fetus or whatever, but like they never did, they didn't know anyone who disappeared. Yeah. No one in the it's family so vanished. It's funny. Yeah. It's, and, it's cool. yeah. But like they all saw someone disappear. I guess that's kind of the thing, right? Like Kevin watched his mistress or whatever disappear uh jill and 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 tommy the two siblings the two uh children they watched like a classmate disappear and then laurie watches the fetus disappear but like they didn't like lose someone close to them well, that's a lot of people for, yeah. for only two percent of the population the, the family had a yeah. lot of loss right they lost the fetus uh they yeah. lost you know they were holding happened to be holding the hands of yeah it's not that yeah, yeah it's not it wasn't that likely that that would happen yeah um, this is why i don't believe two percent of the population died of covid you know just so yeah because people would not disappear you <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah well we should talk about sort of like how, how this predicted society would go and like how society like reacted uh to covid but yeah i think you know yeah, i do yeah, see yeah. them as sort of like yeah and like the son uh or the stepson uh tommy or whatever so like yeah so like uh um uh so it's like the um uh the uh uh you know it's so it's, it's like the you know tommy is like also i think also sort of like the dad right he's sort of also just like a good guy who i don't know if he does he have complexity i don't know like so he's yeah, we the least developed character i think tommy like his character doesn't really I mean, they try to introduce it with, uh, you know, like, like that was an interesting, I mean, it wasn't really that interesting, but it was like something about his character that, yeah. you know, that, that was out of the ordinary or whatever. When, um, when we learn that Kevin isn't his biological dad and like, you know, that, that he tries to go back to his biological dad's house or something. And like, I don't know, it didn't really add that much to him. He's like, the show could do without him, honestly. Like, I guess his connection to Holy Wayne kind of makes yeah. him interesting Holy in a way because it introduces yeah. the Holy Wayne character. Yes. Yeah. So episode nine, right? They go back to the day where it happens. It, uh, and so like the rest of the show is just going, and that's the only like flashback episode. It's sort of funny. I thought that episode was like really not well done the way they portrayed Jill. It's like going so over the top, like, you know, like Family Guy or American Dad where they put on a wig and they're like a completely different character. So like with her, they gave her the bright blue braces and just like, okay, now she's a year, she's a couple of years younger and uh, she's happy. And like, this is yeah, the happy yeah. job, right? It was just yeah, so yeah. over the top to like show her being this like innocent little school girl, um, which, uh, and then when the show comes, it's, it's like, it's like two years later, isn't it? It's like two three or three years, years later. Three years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, and she looks the same. She just, they just gave her big blue, blue braces and Tommy looks exactly the same. I don't know if there's anything they could do. How Tommy old are the different other? hairstyle. You're, you're, yeah. You're the guy who looks into everything. How old are the, uh, Amy yeah. and Jill in real life? Amy and Jill. When they made the show. Uh, so Jill, Jill, I think, was 20 in season one. And I think she's supposed to be like 16 or 17 yeah. uh, in season one. So what, she's supposed to be like maybe 13, 14 in that flashback. I mean, I don't know. Like, there's only so much you can do, right, to like de-age someone unless you have like some kind of doppelganger. Um, that's what they yeah. did with one of the Sopranos episodes with, uh, with Jackie Jr. They actually used his younger brother for a flashback episode. 
Um, but like, yeah, you know, whatever. I gave it a pass on that. But I thought it was a little too, I don't know. I think like they went a little too over the top with like how, I guess how happy the kids were, right? Like Tommy was was happy too. I mean, he did go back and like he had that altercation with his uh, his father. But like overall, the kids were just like happy. And how old was Amy, how old was like Amy in, the, in, in real life? Oh, I don't know sure. how old Amy was. Do they have yeah. a practice? That was a weird not... like subplot that just dropped out of nowhere. Well, like you think like somebody's gonna. Yeah, this yeah. was like a 1990s theme where like the character like is tempted by the teenage like today like you're not it's supposed like to American even like beauty. Teen- yeah yeah you're today you're not even supposed to like teenage girls right it's like you would be bad if you even <laughs> were interested uh, but this is like no, the yeah, age of temp- consent should be thirty That's yeah the, no you know, we're getting well there. if you ask Twitter you know certain part, certain sectors of Twitter yeah yeah um, but this is sort of that consent like you you know you, he's te- he's tempted. You know, he's, yeah, of course, that was a weird thing where like there was that like weird chemistry, that tension between Amy, Jill's friend, who's living with them, and I, was that fully explained? I mean, I assume it had something yeah. to do with the departure. Yeah, that but, was one of that too. But then, yeah, so she's living with them, and then you know, she's she and Kevin have these weird moments, and then there was like you know, cause, and, and sometimes you don't know like what's happening, whether Kevin's dreaming or like in a sort of a fugue altered state and what's real and what isn't um but then yeah yeah suddenly amy and jill have a falling out and you just don't see amy after like what episode seven or something like that was yeah is it that, no is it is it that early i thought she I uh three or maybe eight at the latest but like we don't, don't see it. like she's not in see she's not in the finale at all uh uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I think she'll be. Yeah. I hope she'll be back. I think Maybe she's an interesting. Character. Yeah, she's an interesting. <laughs> I don't character. know if she's bad. Well, I guess well, like she's the, the... I don't know. She's she she. You see I her through Jill's Kevin's daughter. eyes. Are we allowed to? You know. Well, Jill. Okay. In real life, Jill's. Tw- Is that why you asked? Well, how old they are, so that we can, you know, depending on how. No, I, how I don't can, care. Uh, I'm not. I'm you know, not. How, I don't. I don't. I don't. Attraction to. No, I'm, well, I, I, I don't Jill. care about Jill's, the. Jill, I don't care Jill's about the age gap police. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm she, not beholden to that. Jill is clearly better looking, in my view. Well, it's at least it's not like Yellow Jackets where they're all like 30. So it sounds like they're at least close to like what they're supposed to. Are they 30 in Yellow Jackets? I don't think they're. 30. There are some Somebody who are like in their mid to late 20s. There are some who are like in, like 26 or something, which is uh, I don't like that. Which is crazy. I don't like when they choose like when they're clearly not the age. like. I think Jill could pass for 16 or 17. Well, they have but... sex scenes in Yellow Jackets. I think that's maybe why. Maybe why that maybe there's some kind of legal legal thing about sex scenes and uh kid, you know, underage kids um yeah well how old is kevin i actually didn't look up i think he's supposed to well the, well that's the, actor, the other thing I think yeah, is he, like he is 40s. like i think him and um his wife uh laurie are the same pretty much the same age or close yeah. but like he is like a man <laughs> she's a woman and the yeah. woman you know this is why they traditionally have age gaps because the man can look very good at 40 while the woman tends not to um, I mean, she's, she's, well, she looks most, most men can look better, but they usually they don't, right? No, no, yeah, you're right. Like if you yeah. stay in shape and your hair doesn't all fall out, you can still look pretty good in your 40s. But you know, Kevin is, or the the actor, but like, yeah, Kevin is an anomaly. I think like <laughs> yeah. most guys don't look that good. Most like well, you know, no, 45 year old have, police chiefs. It's, it would be weirder. Imagine if they had, um, uh, like who's like a really hot 40, like a 40 year old, like Jennifer Lopez or something. It okay. it would stand out more. Like you take the ninety fifth percentile of male, ho- I don't know. I think like the top ten percent of. I, I think that like the women who look good at forty are like one in a hundred or one in f- like two hundred, and the men are like one in ten. So um, I, what I think, I think like I think there's not actually. So I think men have the potential to be better look. Like like if you know if you, if you took like you know forty year old women. 40 year old men and like you know put them under some kind of workout regimen and whatever i think like men have a higher potential to look good at 40 but yeah. in the real world in america like 40 year old men are pretty like not good looking <laughs> like i don't think they're any better no. looking than the women actually yeah in reality no, I, like, I, I know, you know that they're not he doesn't look like a typical yeah. police chief I mean, he's not chief Wiggum. yeah yeah but i get what you're well i, I think like yeah that that kind of makes sense and then and then he yeah, ends I up having similar, a relationship think, with nora durst I think, I think Kevin is like 98th percentile for men. And if Lori, I'm assuming they're both 40. I don't know. Um, I didn't look it up. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, I, assume Lori um, is uh, 40. She'd be at the 95th or 98th percentile of women. They're both at the same percentile. But I think Kevin <laughs> looks better. Okay. And I'm not it, it, being I gay. That's right. Sure. Yeah. Which I think it makes because I, I I looked up the age for uh, for Nora the actress who plays Nora Durst and she's about ten years younger than than the actor who plays Kevin so like yeah she's like oh, mid thirties wow. 
Nora has yeah. some muscles. Did you see her? Did you notice? Like she's got muscles. Actually, I thought my yeah, favorite I, I, episode. I thought, actually, yeah. my favorite episode was. It reminded me of Kevin Finnerty uh, from Sopranos when he went to that conference and didn't oh, know who yeah, he was. Yeah, I yeah, wonder yeah. if it took inspiration from it because you know somebody they had steals to have, her. Right, that was so yeah. good, uh, and yeah. it was so like yeah, like it did seem to pay some kind of homage. And, and to, one thing I really yeah. liked that character Marcus, the blonde douchebag. Like I okay, like it makes you think he's she's just rejecting him. He's such a douchebag and just like, you know, I'm not going to ask you what you do. And he's, but, but, and this is, this is why douchebags get the girl because they stay persistent in their douchebaggery. And he just kidnaps her, takes her to the uh, top. And I don't think they, they don't actually hook up, but they pretty much come very, very close. You feel like it could have gone yeah. a different direction. He could have hooked up with her. Um, but it really, it's a good episode for sort of like the idea that like persistence, uh, persistence and like, Women like douchebags. Like a normal show, I think most of the time, nine out of ten times, she, they, we would have not seen that character, or like he would have been humiliated. And some of the whole point was like to bring him on to like be this example of male <laughs> douchebaggery. And, but yeah, he yeah. turned out to be like a fun guy, and she, he almost got the girl, and then he didn't get her. But he was still like he still had a good time, right? I, that, yeah, I was not that's expecting an interesting to go point, in that Richard. Yeah, I didn't really, I didn't really link that up. But yeah, there is something there about. Um... Yeah, a lot of guys, right? Like, like once the girl turns them down, they think that's it. Like, they get demoralized, they get dejected, and they're like, "Oh, you know, I tried, I shot my shot, or whatever." That's it. But no, like, if if it's not like you know, if she's not like obviously repulsed by you, and she just kind of playfully, you know, shrugs you off. Like, you can usually have, you know, that's you know, that's like you know, strike one. But you know, you, you yeah. still have another chance or two to to keep going. I think there's something to that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, you're, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's right. Yeah, I actually, I'm, I'm like weirdly, uh, yeah, I think like, you know, I think Nora is a very attractive woman, and like, and I don't, I, you know, she's not like, not like in a, I mean, obviously she's an actress and everything, but like, yeah, there's something strangely appealing about. I, I, I think her. so too, but you notice yeah. she's always in a dark like pantsuit, right? So it's sort of her being yeah. mourning, like she's not really taking you. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you ever see her like wearing? Uh, Anything else? Like, I, I know those are her work clothes, but it seems oh, like I she's... I didn't notice that. No. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't really... Yeah, I didn't notice that. Well, maybe she's just... I mean, I'm thinking I think that. one thing the show does generally is like... is like, And, and I guess this is like a, a strike against it being any kind of conservative show, is that it, it like refuses to depict a happy family. Like, even pre-departure, um, Nora's husband is cheating on her with the preschool teacher... And, you know, he's kind of being a, you know, like an absentee husband and father working, you know, you know, lying to her saying he's working late when, you know, he's, he's probably sleeping with, uh, with, with the other woman and she's trying to get a job and she's like fed up and frustrated with being a housewife. And then the yeah. Garveys, right? Like even in that flashback episode when the kids are seemingly happy, um, you know, they're having marital issues and Kevin's lying to her about smoking and then he sleeps with uh, that woman in the hotel room. Yeah. And like, there's like no, like no one is actually happy uh, just being in like a family, right? So like, it is kind of a normie town, but like, they still have to have like cheating and, and marital dissolution. Mm -hmm. They, you know, it's like, I don't think it's like, like prestige dramas are allowed to show happy families anymore. Mm, I mean, are there, are there happy families? That, <laughs> I think, you know, families are stages of conflict, I mm. think. Um, they are, but then, they, but like the overall message is that like family is like the most important thing to like everyone, despite it all, right? <clears throat> and like I, I don't know, like I don't. They hint at like you know, like the dad who's gone sort of crazy. Like I think he hints when he tells his son, like you know, he sort of communicates his son, like I guess the people who are left behind are the ones who didn't appreciate their families enough. I don't know. He's like, you know why, Kevin? Right? He sort of hints yeah. at that. It's like you know why. Kevin or something Kevin's like that but it doesn't that. make sense because like babies and stuff are disappearing so like i don't know if that's like the story that's the answer i hope we yeah get that's an answer, there's a debate hope, like, within someone... that within that I... the leftovers universe right about like was this the rapture and so matt the uh, the reverend spends you know uh, expends a good deal of energy early on like digging up all the dirt on the yeah. uh the the departed Right, like about how you know the judges who took bribes and the people who whatever like uh, uh you know beat their children or whatever, and he's like trying to prove that um that these people were not good or that they weren't um you know they weren't taken or something and uh for 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 like you know uh uh like good Christian reasons or something 
And so, yeah, I think, which, which actually in a way makes it even more, what, confusing or perplexing because, you know, if, if it was the rapture, at least they'd have like, they'd know what it was, right? Like, oh, it turns out Christianity is true after all. <laughs> um, but like, they really don't know. It's like completely random. They have no idea why this happened. And if I'm not mistaken, I mean, whatever, like spoiler, somewhat of a spoiler alert. It's well, not really a spoiler. Well, well, are you going to spoil, are you gonna spoil Beyond Season? Are you going to spoil Beyond Season 1? I mean, not really. I just remember like... Don't, don't I spoil. Mean, uh, I, just, I just remember like somehow, like basically like scientists are d like investigating this. And that's all yeah, I, I remember. I was, that, there was the, a scene but, of that in Season 1 like, where they're testifying. Maybe it was, maybe, yeah. uh, of course and they so, were like, they're trying to yeah. They're trying to, you know, trying to identify like a, a rational scientific explanation for this. How come there was nobody, uh, how come there's no reports in this universe of like somebody with like had an iPhone on them when they disappeared and like they dis you see the video, like you didn't, you never see that like people would be analyzing those videos, right? Uh, like yeah. somebody would be on like filming something and they don't mm -hmm. do that. Um, and so like, from, as far as we know, nobody was being filmed at the moment they disappeared. Even the, uh, yeah, even the ultrasound, well, okay. the ultrasound, she turns away, they turn their head and then the baby is gone. They don't actually see the baby. Now, if the ultrasound is recorded, they would have that footage. Yeah. Right. But you think so this the would be. So the portrait took place in 2011, which there were iPhones around then, but even if there weren't iPhones, you know, someone would have had a camera rolling Security or something. Security camera. Yeah. Yeah, anything to show it. That's interesting. I don't actually know if they like later. I don't remember if like later seasons do show any footage of of like what happened then. Um, yeah, that's a good point too. Yeah, I did like that episode with Nor. I think like that the 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 two like sort of character study episodes were just followed one those the 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 one with with Nora in the hotel and and Matt who's her brother in the show. Uh, the reverend is he a reverend? I think he's a reverend who yeah, um, yeah. is trying to get money to save the church. Like that was a great episode too. Um, I don't know. Yeah, those two are probably my favorite episodes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was, uh, yeah, that was an interesting one too. So, and I guess that was the one that made me think. Like initially, like is this actually like a, a sort of religious show for atheists? Like Matt's sort of. Uh, continuous reversals of fortune throughout that episode of trying to save the church and ended up failing. Uh, yeah. But it did seem like something supernatural was, was going yeah, on. Yeah, it is sort of, yeah, I, I don't know. We're going to see sort of the, whether it's actually, I don't think it's actually, I, I don't know. Like, I don't think it's actually a Christian. Show. Like even the sex scenes are like too much for a Christian show. Like, it's not like yeah. a person who made, I, I don't know. I don't know about evangelicals. Well, I don't so think they, it's overtly uh, Christian. Like I think anything, it's going to be like implicit, right? Like they're not going to make like an actual Christian show on HBO. But, you know, and yeah. they make fun of Matt, too. Like, Matt, does, you know, Matt, like, constantly mocks Matt's, uh, Kev Kevin mocks Matt's religion. And, you know, like, there aren't many other religions know. in this universe. There are no Jews or Muslims in the town. <laughs> there are no non-Christians. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, that's, well, at least for now, you know, maybe later yeah. they'll, uh, yeah. you know, they'll have some, uh, some, some that's not a judeo yeah, perspective. I, I mean, there's also no. Yeah. I mean, there's no fat. It, this is not supposed to be a very wealthy town, right? It's supposed to be middle. Yeah. Like the houses don't look huge or anything, right? Yeah. It's too. It's too. Uh, yeah, it's too nice looking. There's no. There's no. Um, yeah. There's no fat. There are very few fat people. No one wants uh, to see fat yeah. people on TV, Richard. You know. No, well, I guess does. they used to. The only show yeah. that I can think of that actually like well, well you know who okay, was, so there fast? was sitcoms, the remnants, uh, the Gladys woman. I, I saw her, oh. and I'm like, how could they? I've never seen. I never see characters this fat, but then they kill her off because I'm like, okay, fine, like yeah, like that. May, they have to because like nobody yeah. wants to look at there's that. There's Gladys and Patty, who's like not fat, but just like she just looks like a normal middle aged woman. Uh, Patty, the one who kills herself. Like Gladys is gigantic, uh, and and her and her and her. Uh, the one who got gigantic. I don't think she's gigantic. <laughs> These are normal. Well, I guess they're you know objectively they're gigantic, but they are just like normal sized women for their age in America. Right? Like, no, I think Gladys is well above average. I, I don't think, think so. I, I, thought I don't Gladys think she's was normal. A, no. Okay. Now I need to look it up. Gladys left. I thought and, she was and, like and, a, the, and the white and the white outfits do not flatter her. You see her just like every fold and every roll. I was so relieved when they when they stoned her to death. I mean, it was just uh, it was too okay. Much. She's. I would say she's only slightly above average. Yeah, like, all, yeah, like, like Americans in small towns, like that is like yeah. having that kind of like no neck, just like a fat roll on your neck. That's like not uncommon anymore, sadly. You know. 
but yeah okay so those are like the two two you know fat people and then oh yeah one of uh kevin's uh deputies or whatever his like yeah. underlings on in the police station he's like he's like a, a fat looking hispanic guy i mean he's not like yeah. massive but he's like chunky uh, guys yeah you know, like yeah, a few yeah. but none of the stars are going to be fat right like no one wants to yeah. watch no, that's, that's a pretty you know, small obesity range, especially right? sad yeah. right like it's a, it's a, it's a it's a heavy dour emotional show and no one wants to watch sad fat people you know they're like, sad fat enough. people are supposed yeah. to be jolly and you're upbeat you know you're sad enough you need to, to be like homer simpson you got to give <laughs> them whatever. looks yeah yeah okay and so yeah the portrayal of sort of small town uh america right um yeah but otherwise else? i think they got the dynamic right of small town america of like there's no know, gay the characters by the way like, you notice that the, the representation is lacking it. in a lot of different dimensions um yeah again maybe the, this is a conservative show yeah you know, I noticed well that too. Uh, okay the most right-wing thing and i'm shocked they did this is wayne is a black like a black a magic black man like a ma black <laughs> cult leader like he's every stereotype the, uh, he's, he's he's crazy the he's magical black highly sexual he's you know he's, he's charismatic control, yeah. He impregnates yeah. underage Asian girls. Like this mm. is like uh, as his fetish. This is like I'm amazed they they did this. Um, yeah, this would have been strange in 2020. I was I was excited. I was like, oh, wokeness, man. We 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 passed some peak with this character. But then I found out it was 10 years old, and I and I got I got sad. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. So you have to have one black character, right? Like, I think you can get away with no, like, you know, in in the mid twenty ten. No, but he's, he's he's like a negative stereotype, right? He's like he's like a black, yeah. you know, you a can, black sort of. You can get away with no gay, like like Deadwood. I was shocked there were no gay characters, but they still had some black characters, right? Like you have to have Deadwood had no Deadwood character. had one. Deadwood had two. Uh, I, they had two. The, yeah, the Jane, general. Jane, and uh, I forget I forget oh. her name now. It was Jane uh, Cy, Tolli Cy Tolliver's girl? Oh, they were like okay, yeah. I yeah, guess they, they were like were a sort couple in the movie. I, I think in the movie, whatever. They sort of became lesbians, and then uh, yeah, yeah okay. okay, that's that's true. Oh yeah, yeah, my my yeah yeah. I remember right. They made the prediction we'd have a gay male character, but we only had lesbians. That's right. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's no gay, and then there's only is there only one black character? I mean, they have. I think they have some like and, minor and the race with gay characters. And, and nobody notices that he's black like no one's racist against him because they're like he's every stereotype he's like you know he's like oversexed and like a predatory and like criminal and violent and unpredictable and sort of yeah. you know schizophrenic and nobody's like oh this black guy <laughs> they mentioned he they noticed that like the cops or fbi whoever that is is talking and they notice he likes to impregnate asian girls they notice the, se the sex but he like he sends out like teams of like asian girl and like white guys yeah, 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 white, yeah, like this will not, this will not, uh, you know, make anyone suspicious. Like I've got an Asian girl and white guy, and I'm the black guy impregnating them all. <laughs> it's yeah, very, which yeah. so so it's kind of a cult, right? Like so yeah. so in terms of cults, I think like Holy Wayne's cult makes more sense because like cults are usually driven by like charismatic leaders who want to have sex with teenage girls. Yeah. The Guilty Remnant, like it's like mostly women. And yeah. they don't, and like, there's leaders. no, there's, it's very sexless. There's no leader. Like, it's and there's a few like, men, like who wants, what men wants to join a woman led depressing like sexless, yeah. like dour, like you don't, like, yeah, I see, like, I feel like some black guys in there. I'm like, okay, they're all white women. They're all the white women are like just depressing white women. And this black guy just joined this cult to be at the bottom. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe that that's, I couldn't believe that would happen. Yeah, and you can't talk. It, it's it's more like a nunnery. Like that was the vibe I got. It was like, okay, it's a cult, yeah. but it, it reminds me of just like a bunch of nuns. It would have been more interesting um, if it was all female. I mean, they they have these like these yeah. sigma males, like these men. Who are these men who joined this? I mean, they must be in, you know, they must be in terrible shape. Yeah, yeah. There were like a, another unrealistic thing was when they killed Gladys, right? Like they they did a false flag operation to kill one of their own and like create like some controversy around the guilty remnant. And they chose the Gladys. Like I, I think, like in in the like you know it, the if that were to exist in the real world, like they would have picked one of the guys. I think like they wouldn't have killed a woman. Like a bunch of women wouldn't have chosen. Maybe because she was old. Like that's the only thing I think of. Is like if they have male characters, they're going to choose a male to kill off versus one of the women, especially because it's a majority female organization. So I don't, I don't know. know. There's a lot I don't, of I don't other know. things. 
Yeah, she's old and fat. I don't know. They, maybe they have a shortage of men. They, it's like, who are we need this old fat woman for? I'm not. I, I, are we 100% that they killed her? It's, uh, she says it, but she's trying to get uh, Kevin to kill her when uh, Patty says that. I, I don't know if we're 100% certain yeah, on that. I think so. Well, I don't think we're 100%, but like, I think we're pretty certain. I mean, Patty admits it. And then, like, the, the, like, circumstances around the killing, right? Like, the, like, the people who are, killing her never say anything um and like i think in the real world like real real like non-guilty remnant if that was a real operator like a real killing like a real murder they would have yelled things at her or said something to her or like you know they, they would have vented their frustration at her because the people in the town hate the gr um but instead they're silent as they're throwing rocks at her and i think that's like an indicator too that they're probably fellow members of the cult um mm. Hmm. Also, the yeah, fact yeah. that they were able to kidnap her. So Wait, why did she even? She yell. What did she say? When she does, she yell at them or something? She said something like "Please stop!" Like toward the end. Okay, so maybe she had her second thoughts, <laughs> right? Because the Patty, if that's what Patty says, well, she... no, 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 no. I don't think Gladys. I don't know if Gladys like knew in advance that this was going to no, happen. No, well, no. Patty says, "Well, if Patty's right, she says she was. Uh, she was okay with it." He says, "Your wife will oh, be too." Well, that bad. part I don't. Yeah, you think I mean, she's telling maybe the truth, it, it, like she was okay with it in the sense that like everyone in the GR accepts that like whatever their their job is to make the people remember, you yeah. know. But I don't know if she was like, oh, you guys are going to kill me tonight, okay? Like I don't know if she was, mm -hmm. you know. I think Patty mm -hmm, was yeah. kind of, you know, it was it was a little ambiguous there. Yeah, but I do think I mean, like, there were yeah, some was probably uh, there were some you know a few yeah un a few yeah unrealistic things. The, I, what drove me crazy? I hate these coincidences that are too much. What, Kevin happens to be the one who finds Wayne in the of all the people in the world. Kevin, oh yeah, right, yeah that was finds that was him little, in the bathroom. Yeah. Anywhere he could have been in the world, he was there. Uh, and Kevin is the guy who finds him, even though his son is like the one you know his the guy he's you know controlling in the call. That was uh, that was pretty that was pretty ridiculous. Um, yeah, I think like for that, yeah, I, that struck me as silly too. But I mean, it was. It's like, okay, so how much suspension of disbelief are we supposed to have? Like, you know, weird supernatural things happen. I mean, the other thing is, like, in the in the finale, so Wayne, as he's dying, tells Kevin to make a wish. And, like, and this was, like, Wayne himself doesn't even know. Like, is he really magic? Yeah, I like that. Right? I like he's that. like, people he's call like, me a fraud. fraud. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I don't what kind of accent does wish. Wayne have, by the way? Where is he from? He's British. He's, like, he's, 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 he's British. British. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. And... And the actor's British too. Um, I looked this up because I was curious about like why they have like a random like black British guy in like upstate New York, but apparently he's actually a British actor. Or yeah, so 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 yeah, so he tells Kevin to make a wish, and then Kevin doesn't say the wish, but then later uh he's reunited, right? Like not with, with his old like he he at the end of the finale, he goes back to his house and there's Nora with with, with Wayne's baby. And uh, and his daughter is back, and uh, and then like they have a dog too, and so that's the new an family. Argument could be made that like what Kevin wished for was to basically have a family again, right? Because he was lamenting this like in the in the diner you know, every, when he's with is, Matt, he's crying. Maybe this is very Christian because everyone is getting cucked all over the place, right? You have uh, <laughs> Kevin taking in Tommy, who's not his uh, son. Um, and then he's taking he, Holy Wayne's son. He's, he's, he's raising yeah, another man's he, baby. Yeah, he, yeah, and Nora's taking Holy Wayne's son. Yeah, this guy's just the ultimate – he's just you know taking every child and, and taking responsibility for it. What if we um, find out that Jill's not really his daughter? You know, that would that be would the be ultimate, like, we discover that yeah. Lori was... No, but Christians do him. like this. The Christians like this stuff. Like, oh, adoption, abortion is bad, so, like, adoption is... Christians do like good. adoption. Yeah, I mean, in, including the fetuses and the... That was the most conservative, that was sort of the most correct message, right? It's like, the fetuses count. Don't forget, they're in the they're in the uterus, but they're, they're well, 2% all, of them, too. Yeah, this is, like, right, yeah. this is, the th like, the Christian thing. Like, we're all God's children, that kind of thing. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is like, you know, I've, I've seen some like, you know, hereditarians say like the whole blank slate thing, like the reason why, like one reason why it's so effective is because like Christians believe it. And so it's like not just the left, but the right kind of believes it too. It's like, yeah. you know, anyway, that's like a whole, but anyway, so yeah, so, so yeah, so, so Kevin was crying uh, when he you know, sort of like confessing or whatever to Matt at the diner saying, you know, he screwed everything up and, and whatever. And he, he confesses that he was, he was unfaithful to Lori. And then, and then he runs into Wayne in the, in the bathroom, makes a wish. And then the, cause it, cause the, the direction of the show, like the finale was really grim. 
right? Like the the the, the riots in the streets. Suicide. We were supposed to think she was going to kill herself, right, Nora? Uh oh, interesting. How did you not yeah, think she wrote that? a note? Yeah, she oh, was no, writing no, I, a note. I'm not strong enough. I can't go on. Like you, I, I, uh, that's just, that sounds like a suicide. Oh. Note. <laughs> How do you I thought she was just going to I, 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 no, 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 I thought she was just going to leave Mapleton. But I'm amazed. Yeah. No, I, I thought that that people. was like a note. Like I'm leaving Mapleton and gonna uh, and I'm starting over. But see, it seems it seems that not. Often. It doesn't seem to meet the moment. I'm leaving yeah. Mapleton. It doesn't seem Does like. That, yeah. <laughs> you leave notes for true. suicide usually. You don't not for okay. not for. I guess not within for, the context of the show, it yeah. would have yeah. Oh yeah, I just didn't. I didn't pick up on that. That she was yeah. Which actually yeah, given her and, and like yeah her. Her, her, la- um, her last moments with her like fake family, and her activities, right? Like where she would hire a, a, a yeah. call girls to shoot her while she wears yeah. a Kevlar vest, right? Like she clearly has like suicidal inclinations. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But then, but then she sees the baby, right? And then that's what sort of saves her or changes her mind is when she sees the baby and realizes she can start over. You know what? It's such a mis- this is why it's you know what this was another Christian show because she's saved by the baby. She doesn't leave now. If you're going to do that, if you're not going to even have her leave, why not have it be a suicide note where she's about to kill herself and then find the baby, right? Because it looks like she's not leaving. That's what it looks like, right? So like mm. because they're Christians, suicide is so bad they don't even want the character considering it. Mm. Okay, so they don't want the character considering suicide in the first place. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, why like... would you not make it a suicide note in that case if she's not going to do it? Right? If she's not going to do it anyway. If she's not leaving, which I think is what we're going to see. Why Why not just Why not just have her like make it more dramatic? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's just well, it was already a pretty she... dark episode to begin with though like all of the like the riots and like the the death and you're like seeing people like beat the gr women in the streets and then it's i mean i guess you could right like you know i guess you could have it just be like extra extra grim and like have i don't know like have like have nora like tie up a noose in her garage or something (laughs) but and then she hears the cry of a baby uh i guess you could have done that I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess like well, that, I mean, because, because, that look, because like, it does she like... no because it, to leave town seems so. It doesn't seem to meet the moment. She comes back. She's traumatized. I, I thought she sees wax figures of her husband and children, and you know, and she's like holding their hands, and just to move out of town, uh, like it seems, it seems not big enough. It seems like this is like I give up. Yeah, it seems yeah, like yeah. now that you say it, it does make more sense that it would be a suicide yeah. note. I mean, the weird thing is, like, that she was writing to Kevin in the first place because, like, you know, they, they only, they, they don't really start, like, they don't really have a relationship. Well, right? well like, she they go says, on, like, two like dates. I just want some, I want someone to write to. He's, like, the only person she knows, basically. It seems oh, is that like what she says? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it seems like, like a that, very, right? like, dramatic, heartfelt. Okay, but if yeah. she's going to commit suicide, she needs someone. Okay. Yeah. And he's, like, the closest person or, to or move her. Or, yeah, but yeah, if she just wants to move, why does she need to tell anyone? Like, a suicide makes sense she would need to tell someone. <laughs> yeah, okay, like, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Well, if it was, like, a breakup letter of... But yeah, okay, I, I'll have to re-listen to it now, because now, now that you, you're saying this, like, I, no, now I'm convinced but the, but the other it, ridiculous like, thing is how they're able to just break into people's houses and never get caught, and nobody puts yeah. alarms up. Like, even though Nora, Nora saw when uh, Jill came in and took her gun out and put it, and, like, so people had been breaking into her house, these people had breaking up. She doesn't have an alarm. These, none of these people get caught. It's like Santa Claus, when you're, like, a little kid. How does Santa Claus visit all the houses? 2% of the population disappeared. I tried doing the calculations. Okay, it's a town of, uh, I don't know, 50,000 people. Um, okay, 2%, 2% of that means, you know, 1,000 people disappeared. They had to go to 1,000 homes, get their outfits. Maybe they didn't do it for everyone, right? Maybe they maybe they just did it. They they just did it to Nora for some reason, <laughs> right? But it's like there's yeah. that's a lot of work for this little cult, which is not that big to be doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it may have. Yeah, that's true. I think. Well, Nora's kind of famous in the town too, yeah. right? Yeah, like they people kind of didn't know everyone. Yeah, because her okay. family, because like her whole family disappeared, and so like this would have nobody's like, watching these would... freaks. These freaks are breaking yeah. into people. No one's watching them. Like they could just keep breaking into people's houses, and no one's putting up alarms. And no one's doing. Yeah. It was just, well, you see ridiculous. Kevin have an alarm, but he's like going through these like sort of 
schizophrenic uh mental breaks where like his alarm isn't working half the time or like he himself is turning it off unknowingly and so like there is an alarm but then like the other yeah the others you don't really see that that often i mean yeah it did it did seem like generally people like like because apparently the guilty remnant has like chapters across the country because early on like i don't know what episode this was maybe three or four Kevin has a conversation with the feds and they were like, you know, we we can come in and get rid of these people for you. If you don't stop it now, it'll continue to spread. And then they show that clip of uh, them burning Gladys's body. But there are like a bunch of other people like like uh, draped in white. Like, I guess we're meant to infer that these are all, you know, other cult members uh, that, that have been murdered across the country. Um, and so it seems like, yeah, these are, you know, maybe, maybe they have like, organizational tactics maybe they know how to bypass simple home alarms i don't know i mean it's 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 unlikely that a bunch of like middle-aged women yeah. who can't even talk you know they're not allowed to talk i don't know the, the talking thing i also didn't understand either because it seemed like sometimes patty could talk sometimes not like the new recruit what's her name yeah Actually, what is her name the 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 one played by Liv tyler uh meg Meg could talk sometimes early on, and I don't know, like the talking. I think when you're early, I think early you can you can talk. I but think then you Patty was taking a break, right? She's in the diner with Lori. Like you can talk now today. Like yeah, okay, I think she's. Why? I think she's like the leader, isn't she? I think like the leader maybe can make their own rules. Yeah. And maybe when she says you can talk, like Lori doesn't actually talk. Maybe she doesn't trust that she can. Yeah, she doesn't feel like she can actually. Uh, is maybe it's a t she sees it as like a test of loyalty. And you know what she tells her? Gladys was here and she told me blah, blah, blah. So maybe because Gladys talked, you know, that showed a lack of commitment. And maybe that maybe they killed her because of that. Maybe that was Ooh. sort of like a So Patty's like trying to test. lure them out, like trying to see who's 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 easy to break. And then yeah. they get the they get yeah, the target they get the on the back for the next like uh GR killing. Um yeah, that is interesting. I mean, I think like the the show does have like a pretty interesting and I think a realistic portrayal of marriage, right? Like I think especially like so so in this context like so Kevin cheated on Lori, but he still loved her, right? And then like even after the departure and everything, like he clearly wants to get back with her. Um even though she's off and joined this cult and he's trying to take care of Jill and Tommy uh, ran away and joined this other cult. I, what, what kind of luck is that, by the way? Like his wife joins the GR, his yeah. son yeah. joins this like Holy Wayne cult to like shepherd his babies into existence. Yeah. Um, and then like Jill kind of half hates him, but then so but Kevin still loves Lori, right? Like even though he cheated on her, and I think like this is something a lot of a lot of people, I think especially a lot of women, misunderstand is like men can cheat and like still like love their wives. And so the show mm -hmm. is pretty accurate in, in, in this regard, where Kevin just like had this fling. He doesn't even remember, right? He tells Matt, he doesn't even remember the woman's name when she departed. Because he asked, like, yeah. who was she? And Kevin was like, I don't even remember her name. Um, he said, I don't know and, her name. He might not. He, I, yeah, I remember him because I, I remember yeah. getting the impression he might have never even learned it. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, and it's possible, right? Because she just invited him to the room. Well, she said, are you a good guy? And he said, no. And then she invited him up, which I think is another maybe. Yeah, it might not have been his her. first time. Yeah. yeah. And and so yeah, but he clearly loves Lori. And then when uh, when Lori brings him the divorce papers, and Meg is explaining like she wants to divorce you, and Kevin when he tries to like basically, you know, either like basically kind of halfway talk her into like staying or getting her to talk or communicate, and he doesn't say like you know we have a marriage, we have a family, we have a house, we built a life together. What he says is we took vows, which is actually kind of a to me like that. This was like another sort of indicator of like is this a sort of crypto christian show is like you know you, when you get married it's not like the marriage stays together as long as you're happy or as long as you have a house together or you have kids it's the vows that you took right it's the sort of promise that you made to this other person even if uh even if you aren't happy you have to still stay together uh and so that was like an interesting thing is like that's what he told her but then kevin himself is not religious right like he tells matt later he doesn't believe in the bible and whatever so so anyway yeah, he ends up getting the divorce and dating Nora. And I was actually happy when I saw that. Like when I saw him and Nora get together, I was like, this is this is nice. Like I, I you know, I think they have good chemistry together. But better than him and Lori. I think Lori's just like a horrible character. Yeah, Lori is not a great not a very good character. Yeah, Nori Nora I like her too. I agree with you. Um uh yeah, like so how society reacted, you know, 
Oh, and the other thing that was also racist, you talk about the, um, uh, uh, the Holy Wayne, um, but also the black guy who happened to be a fraud who also wrote that book. Uh, you remember, remember at the oh, conference, yeah, 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 yeah. he's like another kind of sort of black caricature, right? Sort of like a, a trope, right? He's like this con man, like who's just sort of smooth <laughs> and like talking about, uh, you know, uh, talking I think about. I think you're reading too much into this. I didn't no, get that at all. I, I just it, thought like, I thought it was like, that was a perfect character that could be white and they just made him black because it's like, it's no, nice to have a black he, he's, a, he's sort of a black character. He's like a smooth talker. He, he, uh, you know, he's, he, he's grifting. He is like, just like talking in platitudes. Like you can do it, man. You just, you know, you just, you know, feel better about yourself. <laughs> no. Okay. Maybe you're I too colorblind. Really maybe, I thought, maybe I thought I'm, he I'm, got like, you know, he was yeah. just like a typical kind of, I don't know. I thought it could have been a white guy, like, like a bullshit artist, just kind of like a guy who, uh, um, yeah. but don't you, you think know, it's a, I don't know. Maybe you're but... not sensitive to racial stereotypes the way I am. I'm not really or sensitive I'll... to it. Yeah. Uh, I maybe. didn't get that at all. Uh, because like it's not even it's not even entirely clear that he is a fraud. Nora accuses him, and Nora's clearly sort of prickly and sensitive to. But no, he's he's sort of he's just a good talker, but really full of it. I think it's like the, I think. But it's he sort did of lose the, people, right? Like he I lost think somebody. He, like, yeah, yeah, he lost. Okay, he lost somebody. I don't know if he lost a kid. So like it's real, even if his, yeah. um, you know, his book and his lines are, I don't know, embellished, but. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know because like the the whole, like the 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 smooth talking, uh, snake oil salesman or whatever. Like that's like not necessarily a. It, I don't know if that's like a trope around black men or it's something. Not as strong it, like, as the whole like, lane thing, but I do okay. think I do think yeah. sort of just like a smooth character with like not a lot behind it. I think Silver is tongue. sort of a, so, you know, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it did go in a different direction. I, I thought that like that was actually going to be like maybe Nora was gonna like sleep with him or he was gonna yeah. sleep, you know, it, it did not go in that direction. So that's yeah, that's okay. Yeah, this is another way. I mean, the, yeah, the, yeah, it seemed like hmm. I'm really when I'm done, I'm gonna sort of I'm gonna be interested to know about the politics and sort of the the view. Well, we'll see. Maybe we'll see. Maybe we'll, we'll get clarity. Well, the guy who did this season. show did, also did Lost. I don't. I, I watched like I the know. first four or five seasons of Lost, but like Lost was just such a different era. That was like 2006 or something. Like you know, that was like the the, the whole like political milieu of America at that time. Like I don't I don't remember anything political about that show. It was just like a fun mystery show on each or not do you, uh, do you know if it ended um it planned to end after three seasons or did it just like night do we get some conclusion after all so, this so yeah it is it is like a whole like because I, I looked that up too that it is like a complete narrative arc like and so apparently it's based on a book or a novel oh um, yeah, I saw that. yeah but apparently there are some differences like i i skimmed the season one page on wikipedia I, I, like a couple of interesting differences that i i remember was that Kevin in the novel is actually the mayor of the town, but they made him into a police chief, presumably because he can do more stuff, right? Like a mayor, what do you do? You like sit in an office or like talk to people. Yeah. But as a as a cop, you sort of you're you know there's there you can you can depict action uh, in a way that's more interesting for the viewer. Um, what else do I? I don't remember any other any other like no, that they, was needed, like they needed a black woman to be the They needed a black person in a position, a positive black person in a position of authority. Maybe that's why they gave oh, him the black woman. Right? Oh yeah, yeah. They have the black mayor. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's and she's thin too, right? Like there's you know that's uh, uh, another another contrast to sort of the statistical realities of of, of America and small town America. Um, yeah, and she's she's like dating his dad, which is like, actually that's kind of interesting, right? Like she like has this you know ongoing and on again off again relationship with Kevin's dad, uh, but he also seems like you know he's like a charismatic old guy, right? Like he has this kind of like swagger. He was also the former police chief. That that, that made sense to me too, because Kevin's actually I think a little bit too young for that role. But if he's the police chief's son, then and it's a small town, then of course he's just through nepotism and whatever he gets that job. But his dad was is depicted as kind of like this confident, swaggering, cool guy. And so I guess it makes sense that a younger, you know, this young black woman would be interested in him. But then he has a break. And it's kind of, do they explain what happened to his dad to like get him to be locked up in the mental ward? Um, I yeah. think they say, then, well, they say, you know, I can't remember now, but yeah, he just sort of went yeah. crazy after all this. And there, there's... After the departure. Yeah. Wait, it was a yeah. And we don't know if there's 
he has supernatural powers. That's never proven. We don't we don't see that. We he could be completely just crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is kind of you know, it's not it's not a big deal. I think in the context of the show, but I think they're too old for like mental breaks don't happen when you're old like that. Like if you have a serious like psychotic break or like schizophrenic state, like that happens, you know, late twenties, early thirties, um, at the at the latest. And so for yeah. like Kevin in his forties and his dad. Who's Kevin's his, mom, what, by 60s. the way? We don't hear about anything about him having a mom, you know, or yeah. she died, or we don't we don't know. We don't get anything about that. Yeah, we don't get oh, that's true. They don't even his dad doesn't even mention well, I think Kevin might have said something about like how his dad was not a great father or something along those lines. But they, yeah, he doesn't really mention the mom. Um, but yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe this is like, you know, sort of saved for future seasons. Yeah. But yeah, for now, we have no information about that. Yeah, yeah if they meet him the mayor, that's a completely different show. I wonder how, well, like, the book, they have, you have to change everything. I mean, he's not, him being a cop is like sort of a big deal. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I guess, uh, so, so the other thing that just came to mind was so in the book, Matt and Nora Durst are not siblings. They made them siblings. I don't know if that added or subtracted from the show at all. Really, I mean, it didn't really seem that. It's just another. It's just another yeah. coincidence that I don't like. It's like it's it's yeah. for the it's insulting to the intelligence of the viewer. Like it didn't add anything to make them siblings. It just like sort of yeah. put them in the same episode. It put Nora into that episode with Matt at the near the beginning. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess like a dumb maybe a dumb viewer just like doesn't think about coincidence. Oh, oh, oh. And, like uh, and I and the other the other thing is uh, is 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 Wayne is Wayne is not black. He's white. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So they're racist and they're appealing to the dumbest viewer, the lowest common denominator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I don't know, I don't, I, I don't know if the uh, if his there's um, like it's so interesting. It's like when you when you cast a character girls. like Wayne. You could be like so colorblind, like you just said, this is a black actor, or you could be like racist. It's not something a woke person, like you're at least not woke, because if you're woke, you're going to avoid the stereotype. So you could be colorblind, or you could be like conservative or like playing into the trope, but like at least you could rule out wokeness. Um, at least you could rule out yeah. woke as like, you know, a sort of guiding force of the director. I don't think you could, I don't know if you could get away with this in 2020. Yeah. Right? Like, I wonder, like, different. yeah, why they, why they, I mean, it may have just been, it, it did add something because it's interesting, right? Like the fact that Wayne is black and he has a British accent, just, and no, man, no one is like racist against it. No one, him. and no one is like cares that this bl a black man, like no one cares that he's black, right? That's like they notice that he's impregnating well, Asian no, girls. Like, but there's, yeah, yeah. Okay. The Asian they talk girls, about that, but they don't mention his race. Right. So there's like, That's it's a completely non racist world. Right. Yeah. Well, you never yeah, have any, like you never have anything blacks. Blacks are never treated any different than they're not, they don't experience racism. They're not, they're, they're just, they're just some people just happen to be black. Like some people happen to be brunette or blonde. They notice Asians. Yeah. He's picking Asian girls. That's like the only race thing that matters in the entire show. <laughs> it's sort of like, yeah, maybe this yeah, is like 2000, yeah. like maybe this is well, like- Well, I don't know. Uh, I think it's because it's multiple Asian girls. So if it was just one Asian girl that was his lover, I don't think- No, but that's their choice. Like, yeah, but that's their choice. The show did that, right? I yeah. mean- the, It chose uh, multiple Asian, and, and I think that's maybe why it stands out more. So like, then it looks like he has a fetish. Right, but if it was just one Asian girl, I don't know if like it would and there be are no there are no show. other there are no other Asians in the society other than the ones getting impregnated by Wayne, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I don't remember any. And you there know, are no Hispanic. True. It's a very old. You know, this is no, a no, kind no, no, of no, American cop. colorblindness. One of, one of Kevin's cops is a, is a, I mean, he looks Hispanic. He may just be like a swarthy white guy, but yeah. I think he, he might be. Hispanic. He could be a, He could be black. I thought he was like mulatto or something. He could be. Oh no no no! Funny. And there's a when in the library, Kevin. You see, Kevin can speak a little bit of Spanish. When he's oh talking yeah, to yeah, yeah. They're, well, you know the, what this is? This Estonian. is like this is like American civic religion of the 9/11 era. It's a holdover, it seems, because 2014 it's pretty late for this. But it's like white and black are indistinguishable. They are all just Americans. I um, mean, this is not Asians that, and like... Hispanics are are others. You see, yeah, they're new. They're the newcomers. I mean, I grew up in like a, a town, you know, not not that different from Mapleton, and I don't. I think it was basically like. I mean, there was like casual racist jokes, but like, like the owner of the Ford dealership in town was black, and like no one really made a big deal of it. Um, and we had, I like, think Hispanics this is. I think like, this is. I think this is a West Coast thing. And the yeah. uh, when I grew up outside of Chicago, it was a very. Okay. Who was black was very important, and the blacks, you know, they were sort of. <laughs> it wasn't you know, that few. important. Like it was, it was comp like it was observed. Like it wasn't like 
you know, we're, we're it wasn't like colorblind, but I think like colorblindness was an ideal that people held and it wasn't, but it wasn't just like, yeah, I think like it, it, it makes sense to me that like Wayne, yeah, that it wouldn't necessarily register to people, um, especially like, yeah, like, like the post 9-11 pre-woke that like Obama era, Bush era time um, that it wouldn't necessarily be commented on one way or the other. Um, Cause like, you know, I think like, like the late nineties, right. Like if you watch like cop shows from the late, like race is kind of a big deal, right. Where like, it, like, if you watch like NYPD blue, the, the main actor in that show is like casually racist to like Puerto Ricans and blacks and like everyone. But then I think, yeah, after nine 11, it was like, we're all American. There was even that, like that, that famous commercial, you know, it was like, you know, some Muslim lady and some like black guy and whatever. It was like, I'm an American. I'm an American. So I no, but like there that, was there, a lot of people were casually racist in the post. So Sopranos had casual racism. Uh, well, they were the mob, okay, but the Shield too. Yeah. I mean, they were those guys the are Shield super. Those guys are very racism. racist. Um, that's true. Yeah, and, and so the Shield no, is in LA, right? Like that's a, like you know these yeah the, the Shield is like you know if you're a cop in LA, <laughs> like you're gonna notice things. You have to be racist. But I think if you're in a, in a small yeah. town, that's like whatever Mail- mapleton's probably like 80 or 90 percent white that yeah i think it's just different um yeah I don't don't, like the yeah, racial dynamics right. of this you, town. no no it, it, there's two kinds of things there's yeah. blacks who are just they can, when blacks are a very small portion of the population and they're highly selected where there aren't a lot of blacks they can fit in and be yeah. just like sort of like everywhere else outside of chicago i mean it was we had a huge black population that had a lot of problems and like you know people in the suburbs like blacks were just the other and there weren't even there weren't a lot of like middle class black people and like there were none like in the, in, in my suburb and it wasn't it wasn't a rich yeah. suburb they it was really even even if blacks became middle class they went to their own areas so this is uh this is chicago um and maybe yeah. because this is this is because there's enough black people they sort of just stick to themselves even if they have enough money um and uh and i think the northeast i'm guessing is sort of like this and california might not be because there are fewer blacks in like the southwest hawaii steve sailor talks about obama grew up in hawaii and hawaii is like it's cool it's like it's a hard for obama because he likes racial like sort of the idea of being a black guy but in hawaii it's too chill um so you have to go to chicago to find racial conflict that's that's a sailor mm. explanation of Obama. So he goes to Chicago and becomes Become a, black. a community organizer. Yeah, um, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, because yeah, like Obama had yeah, he grew up in Hawaii and then he went to Indonesia, right? And he's like this mocha skinned guy who like has a you know he doesn't he, like his name is like not a typical name for a black guy. And so like yeah, I can yeah. imagine he doesn't even code as black. Well, somebody like, needed. I think when it was somebody, a decision for him to become black in a way. Yeah, I remember reading there was some job he applied for and. Um, some guy was looking for Japanese people for some reason. I don't know. He wanted somebody to like to work with Japanese in the community or something. And like he asked his wife, who was Japanese, Obama, is that a Japanese name? And she said, uh, maybe. And so he got the job because they thought he was <laughs> like Japanese. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he could, like, he could get, like, if, if Barack Obama, if he said that he was uh, Indonesian, like, uh-huh. especially to an American, like your typical normie American, I think they'd be like, oh, oh okay, I don't your know. typical normie American, yes, but not yeah. to me. I mean, I like hope not to us, not not anyone who has any idea what Indonesians look like. He I, look I like would think Indonesian. that he was mixed. Like if he said he was half Indonesian, I'd be like, you know, yeah, there like, are, there, you know, the ma- there's main Indonesians, and then there are like Indonesians who sort of look like blacks. Like there are like some who look there like are, from like, very Papua dark Guinea. skinned, like, yeah, uh, South some. Asians. Maybe. Like, there are some, Maybe. like, South Asians that are, like, darker than black people. Like, very, very dark. Um, yeah. yeah. Indonesian ethnic groups. What's the main ethnicity? In is it Javan? What is it? What, is it, what do they call them? Myth, I think. No, that's, it's, know. uh, sudden, because there are some, I think the main ethnic group in, uh, Indonesia. Yeah, Javanese. Um, and they just, they look like Southeast Asians. They sort of look like Vietnamese. Right, so that's like forty percent. Like but you're right. There's all kinds of strange there's kinds like of a spectrum in South yeah, Asia of like skin color, where like they can be like um, I don't know, like Rishi Sunak, who's kind of like you know, like he's clearly Indian, but he's like you know on on the paler side. But then there are guys who are like extremely dark skinned and I think like they have yeah. like the whole caste system, and yeah, yeah. It's so so. very interesting. Very interesting. yeah, Malay. No, like you know the vast. You know, I think the yeah. Okay. Um, why did we talk about Obama? Um, yeah, oh, we're talking about black people in Mapleton. <laughs> so yeah. you got the mayor, you got Holy Wade, you have uh, the, the silver-tongued uh, author. Yeah. Um, 
and then yeah there's the so the the hispanic cop and then there's like the, so yeah this makes like kevin yeah the fact that he speaks like you know he can he can speak at like a very elementary level of spanish right like this is such a small town cop thing i think like yeah he can like communicate but he like skips words or like the guy has to help him to understand what he's saying and like yeah and so what, like, do, what yeah. do you think like so so yeah let's let's, let's 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 talk about the covid sort of analogy um yeah this is different, right? Because it's random. I think the COVID thing, you know, you joke, you don't know anybody, so who knows? It's, you know, might be all there, might be lying to us that anyone actually died. You're, I don't know anyone no, no, who no, died. No, no, no. I either. think people, like, I, I know someone who knows someone who died, but I, like, I, know you're I, joking. I don't know I if it's joking. 2%. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, do I know anyone even close? No, I don't. I don't know anyone who uh, died or not or even. 1%. Do I Wait a minute. I'm going to look this up. Who... Like, what, per- what percent of Americans. No, died it's at least, I think COVID. it's at least 2 billion deaths. COVID deaths in the U.S. And so that okay. would be like 0.67%, right? Okay, so okay. 20... Well, at least this is the CDC. COVID was listed... Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so it's different. Uh, but well, yeah, it was listed as the sole cause of death for 5% of the population. But, okay, as of April 2023, 1.1 million Americans. Yeah. This is Statista. Okay, so so what is that? That's one percent, right? That's one percent of the roughly. No, there's not. There's uh, not a hundred million people. No, there's three hundred something million people. So it's point three three percent or something like oh, is that. Is that right? Wait, how many? How many Americans? Yeah, is it three hundred million? It's not three. Oh, it's like three fifty or was, so. It's closer to three fifty. Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah, so it's not as many, but the fact yeah. the fact that they're all so old and sick. Uh, and you know what? It's actually an under. Oh wait, 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 wait. So here's what it is. Okay, the Washington Post. One in okay, one in five hundred Americans. Okay, so yeah, that's like what point two percent. But okay. yeah, it uh, underestimates what? it by the way because the uh, the excess death is higher. So we're probably undercounting COVID deaths. But anyways, it's okay. not that. It's you know, it's less than one percent. <laughs> um, and they're all oh, old. all right. Okay, so fine. Maybe maybe yeah, I yeah. am well. What, where did that number come from? One percent. It might have. It may have been like sort of early projections. Somehow that number stuck in my mind, like one to two percent. Might have been like a thread from Nicholas Christakis or something. One of these guys early on that were doing these sort of projections based on like the, the trending data from like March twenty twenty. But yeah. Anyway. So if two yeah. percent, what would our society like? Have we learned something from how society would react to COVID? I mean, I thought it, like this, I this thought seems it too was different. Like, it does seem, it seems, but I, not like that different. I think like. Well, I, I think like the the kind of um, like a, the the conspiratorial thinking, like we didn't really have. I mean, I don't know. Some people would call QAnon a cult, I guess, or like Black Lives Matter, like just like all of the weird political configuration that occurred, like in the wake of COVID and the lockdowns, and then like the weird like attempts at media narrative control. Um. Yeah, and then, like, just the general kind of uh, feeling like nothing matters. Like, I remember that feeling early on, especially young people, uh, early on in 2020 during the lockdowns when, like, all the schools were shut down. You you weren't allowed to, like, go out anymore, have fun. And then, like, as things started opening up, like, yeah, there's just, like, a lot of, like, gallows humor. And, like, I, I just remember that, that, that high school party that Jill went to in, like, the first or second episode. Yeah, right? that was and, sad. Like, and yeah. she's like choking this guy as he's jerking off and like that was <laughs> they're like they're playing a game where they spin know, the bottle yeah. but they like it's like choke or like do something weird yeah it, like is weird it, stuff, kids do that? Right? is this a real game i hope this is not real i don't know if it's a real game but like i think that vibe of like it's not it's not it wasn't like a fun party right it was like yeah. uh let's let's like get messed up and like forget what's going on in the world kind of thing like no one like people want to forget or like move on or something and yeah, like I think there's there was just that sort of like the, the the nihilism set in after this unexpected event, and I think like after COVID and the lockdown, I don't know if it was so much the disease itself as like the reaction to it, like the overreaction of like you know lockdowns and masks, and then the political riots and January sixth, and like all this weird stuff started happening over the course of like a year, or eighteen months, um, and yeah, people, yeah, I, I think there was like an analogy to be drawn there about like people just felt like black pilled you know i mean didn't you feel yeah. this like i remember feeling like especially during the blm riots in 2020 i was like you know like this is like this country is like lost its mind right between the lockdowns and, and, and then like the, the duplicity yeah. around the riots who was allowed to go out who wasn't like you know you couldn't go to church but if you know fauci was on cnn like they're asking him about the blm riots and he's like 
well, I don't really know. Like, yeah. you know, could could, could, know could spread COVID? Yeah. yeah, I don't know Fauci specifically. But yeah, the, the public health people were like this. Yeah, it was. No, no, no. Fauci was specifically on CNN. And they asked him about the riots. It, oh, it was either CNN was, okay. or maybe it was MSNBC. He was on like a more left leaning network. Now, what is interesting him. that doesn't exist yeah. in this world is partisanship. It's not like conservatives think this and liberals mm-hmm. think this happened. And like, you know. Oh, interesting. You yeah, liberals and conservatives today would have different theories about the departure yeah and today, and today that's like <laughs> everything covid just became politicized everything yeah, yeah right yeah. um and so, so, so what, that, like the q on right would say like the government kidnapped these people or like yeah, yeah. well they too with the rapture and the leftists would say i don't know what they would say it's it's yeah. it, you know the god of equality i don't i have no idea what they would say the god of equality say, <laughs> the god of yeah i, I think yeah. like the I don't know. Like, yeah, you're right. I think like, well, the right would either, like, it would be Barford. I think the right would say that it's real, like one the like, left sector would of the right. Want more scientific studies of what happened and to, yeah. and the right would, um, uh, it would just be say it's Christian God. Or government. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they would say it's God, but then like the, the, the paranoid, like there's a paranoid element of the right that would say like, you know, this is like government experimental something, right? Like Area 51, like they would go like off the deep end. Yeah. But then maybe the partisanship is not, maybe because it's, maybe because it's so like, maybe COVID wasn't serious. Maybe it would actually bring like that day of remembrance thing where they all have to pretend they're all like perfect. Like that was sort of realistic and funny to me, right? Um, Like, oh, everyone is a saint. We can't say anything. And then the preacher comes and like, oh no, they were a lot of, all of them, a lot of them were terrible people. Uh, That was sort of realistic. It's sort of like, I don't know. Can you talk about like 9-11 victims and say how much they suck today? You really, I don't think you really can. Um, Or like soldiers who die in wars, right? So it's like pretending they're all, you know, yeah. so good. I don't know if it was realistic, though, to call it Heroes Day, right? Like, to call the departed heroes. That was, like, a little too far. Like, I get what they were trying to go for of, like, they were sort of, I think, satirizing this thing. Like, anytime there's a tragedy, yeah. we immediately have to, like, elevate these people to the hero status. But, like, for the for the departure, like, this wasn't, um, it wasn't, like, a hurricane or a terrorist attack. It was, like, this inexplicable thing where they vanished, and now we're going to call them heroes. That seemed like... A stretch yeah. to me. I think but... the way, yeah, this is so different from COVID because that, that has a scientific explanation. This is this is telling you the supernatural is real, which would change it's not just people dying. It's there is something, there is some force in the universe. You know, it's like so the stupid thing where people are like, oh, UFOs should be treated as a much bigger deal. Like we're being visited by aliens and now the government and I always I was always a skeptic of this stuff. I'm like it's not real. But yeah, like if they were probably. right. Yeah, if they were, but if they were right, they'd have a good point. Like if we did have actual evidence for UFOs, um, and so this is this is like that. But like you could just ignore UFOs if it's just in the news. This is like two percent of people just disappeared. Yeah, I think yeah. that the changes yeah. weren't radical enough in society. I think it would have been probably even more destabilizing um, than you know let on. It's like everyone's trying to forget. Three years later, they're just going on with their lives. Maybe maybe the shock is so great, like. I don't know. Like it would be a fascinating experiment, but like maybe the shock is yeah. so great, all people could do is forget. Yeah, I really. Uh... Well, I think that's part of why, like, there is this kind of uh, nihilism among, yeah, like, like in the show. That I mean, obviously, the people who lost loved ones, like that'll, you know, they're grieving or whatever. But then also this this idea that like if if pe- if two percent of the population could vanish, then like what else is possible, right? Like all of the predictable parts of your world are suddenly upended and you don't know what could happen next you don't know like if tomorrow you're going to wake up and more people are going to vanish um i think like that could upend your world i don't know this might this may be uh stretching things a bit but i'm thinking about like yeah in our world like you know with with covid and like you know the, the and this was like more of a critique from the right but if they're like you know if the government can lock you in your house for you know, for for a relatively weak coronavirus, like what else can they do, right? And then so there was that feeling of like, you know, weird like government overreach and feeling of of, of powerlessness in that sense too. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. It's such a radical thing. We don't. I don't. You know, there's not a. You know, everything is sort of and it's sort of ex- explicable, like in standard categories, right? Of the way the world happens, like th- this would be something different. I I do sort of I don't know I, I go back and forth with it. That's why it's a good show because like you don't. That's why it's a good premise because you really don't know. 
Like it could have could lead to a, like a crazy yeah. revolution. It could be like it's so shocking. People just want to watch football and they want to go back to life. And the ones who didn't have anything happen don't want to hear about it. And they just want to honor the heroes and say it's like another nine eleven. And then you know just yeah. sort of go on with their lives. Like either one seems sort of equally. I think uh, like like the sort possible. of autists on Twitter like this would this would be their whole life, right? Like you'd have like like Substacks <laughs> devoted to trying yeah. to crack I the. Mean, the it doesn't really exist in this world either. It was early, but like you could have had Facebook. Like you could have talked about Facebook or something. Uh, they um, they didn't do that. Um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's. I think yeah. we covered a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. We'll be watching season two and season three. I hear three, that each season is better. To... Like I hear that each season is better than the last. Um, so okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll see what Keep happens. Going. We'll see what happens to Holy Wayne's. Uh, do they call him Holy Wayne or do you just call him that? No, no, no. They call him Holy Wayne. Well, I don't know. Like if if it's just his followers, but I just think yeah. it's like it's funnier if you call him Holy Wayne because like Holy Wayne. okay, you know, I, I you know the, the show is ambiguous. There's an ambiguity about like does he actually have powers or not? You know, is he actually yeah. holy or is he just a guy who? Is charismatic yeah. and, and people want to believe. It's a placebo. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad it's a novel. I'm glad it's self contained. I'm glad it's not just going to go three seasons and then, like, we're never going to get answers to this stuff because, you know, there's real mysteries here. Um, and so, yeah, we'll keep watching and we'll talk about it again. All right. Sounds good.